Hi there and welcome. I'm Weinberg and today is Friday, which means only one thing. It is your weekly top up of unological nonsense poured by myself. Now today we're going to be drinking this. It's a 1990 Clos de Vergeau Grand Cru. Now something this old deserves all the respect that you can possibly imagine that you could ever give it. So I'm going to teach you guys, I know it sounds ridiculous, but how to open a bottle of wine this old. So what we do is we start, we want to get the foil off. Now something as old as this might over time have leaked some seepage you'll see it's starting to come through now that's just where the wine starts to come through it's what we call the angel's share and you'll see you'll notice it here it's ever so slightly down and that's just where the wine naturally sort of pours out and that's why corks are actually porous is to be able to en enable that to happen so wish me luck oh look at that so you can see where i've been laying it down for so long that the cork is beautifully wet which is great because if your cork is dry, it means it might crumble. So look, I mean, this is exactly what you want. Look at that little number there. And if you hear any little noises in the background, that's baby wine Bert, after having just done one of the most savage poos we've come across yet. Now, key point about pouring something like this out is you want to hold a torch. Now you guys unfortunately won't be able to see it on your end because the camera's not quite good enough, but I'm going to hold this torch here. Reason being, is I can see all the way through the liquid, which is really important because as soon as you start to see the sediment coming through, that's when you want to stop pouring because obviously no one wants sediment in their wine. Are you all right there, mate? So as I was saying, Clos de Vergeau Grand Cru. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm an absolute burgundy freak. Pinot Noir is what we in the wine industry often consider as the holy grail of grapes because as it's young it's delicious it's light it's vibrant and it's tasty and when you get to this sort of level real serious kit you get these gorgeous savory farmyardy mushroomy notes will be two minutes mate and it just becomes one of the most amazing things now once this is poured which isn't going to take much longer we're going to leave it for about half an hour maybe just a little bit less to open up now look i can start to see the sediment just at the bottom there and i think that's a wrap oh welcome back this really is one outstanding wine and it's the perfect wine to help me reference what I want to talk about this evening, which is the question of, is old wine good wine and is expensive wine good wine? If you put those two precursors together, does it create something great? And in this case, almost certainly yes. You see, this is a 1990 vintage, 30 years old, and it's from a little area called Vergeau. This particular one is from the Clos de Vergeau, which is a single vineyard area that's completely walled off, 50 hectares, and is owned by 82 different people, which is a really funny thing, to be perfectly honest. It's about 182 acres owned by 82 people. Um, some parts of it are known to be better than others, but it's all certified Grand Cru, and it's known to be one of the best vineyards in Burgundy. Grand Cru means that it is an area that has all the perfect aspects for grape growing. Generally speaking, a very good microclimate and good soil, good aspect for the sunrise, all of these factors that go into the process of how a grape is made. And generally speaking, when we look at something that's Grand Cru, we know that the quality of the fruit that we're going to be getting is of something that structurally will be able to age quite well. And then when we put it into the vinification process, we can make sure that that definitely happens. You see, the structure of the grape is really, really important when it comes to aging of wine. I mean, first and foremost, it's the principal part of the wine that helps it age. We're looking at levels of acidity, levels of tannin, levels of alcohol. All of these things are natural preservatives in the wine. And if you're picking your grapes from what is known to be one of the best areas, 
you're almost guaranteed something that's going to be perfect for aging. Now, are all old wines suitable for aging? Are they something that you'd want to drink young? For instance, I personally wouldn't drink a Bordeaux wine unless it was 10 to 15 years post the vintage because of the big sort of tannic bite that you get at the forefront of the wine. And with that aging process in the bottle, it helps that tannin structure mellow out and it sits firmly in the background as opposed to sort of coming forward and being really dry around the gums and the teeth. But Pinot Noir is naturally low in tannin. So why would it benefit from the aging process in the bottle? Pinot Noir can be drunk quite young and it'll be fresh and it'll be vibrant. The acidity will be brighter than anything you could imagine. But the reason I love this style of wine aged is because of three things. When we taste wine, we look at the primary flavours, the secondary flavours and the tertiary flavours. The primary flavours are what come from the fruit. Secondary flavours are what come from the vinification processes. So are there any oak ageing? Is there any time on the leaves? And the tertiary flavours are the flavours that come from the primary and the secondary, but evolve into their own entity and that's normally due to the aging process within the bottle. Pinot Noir is a great example because when it's young it's bright, it's cherries, it's slightly floral, when it gets a little bit older these sort of farmy, mushroomy, it almost represents the the food, the terroir of where these grapes are from and it's it's a magical thing. We're now about two hours in having opened this and uh, it's gone from this sort of farmy mushroomy bottle stink and it's opened up into this beautiful cherry blossom, hints of violets with this little kick of star anise at the back. The acidity is silky, it runs all the way to the back of the palate and it's an absolute delight. And a wine like this, suitable for ageing, that takes you on this journey, you know, does a wine that gives you that entire journey warrant a hefty price tag? I mean, the answer is yes, of course. I mean, why wouldn't it? But that's not to say that all expensive wine needs to be aged. And that's not to say that all old wine is gonna be any good. But I'll be covering that when I talk about various different grapes at different points in time. Um, for now, I wanted to concentrate on this beautiful little gem of which I managed to pick up for 90 euros in a tiny little cellar in Burgundy last January before the world all started to stop because of COVID. And um, we were looking for a perfect excuse to open it. And what better than now? Cheers. Have a lovely weekend.